what I'd like to do is spend a few minutes to talk to you about uh, the, the DB2 STAP. And Tenzel and Julie did a great job of kind of setting the stage for me where Tenzel was talking about from the collector side, what we can now offer uh, for um, the visual portions of Guardium and how it can analyze the data. Julie talked about the, the data set, the ability now to be able to capture activity as it's being done kind of at a file level. And what I'm going to do is talk about the DB2. I think I get this job, I think, because all of you have the DB2 step. You've been used for a long time. I want to start with just the general uh, value proposition with Guardium. Uh, the, the significance to that is all these STAPs that we're talking about, DB2, IMS data sets, they require no application changes. So you can install them, start collecting data tomorrow, and uh, no one from the application side would be aware that this is taking place. We have very granular policies that can give us the ability to detect, you know, they, to answer the questions that the security teams are asking, specifically who, what, where, when, and how, right? Where was this activity being performed? We don't rely on, on logs um, that could be erased by attackers or rogue insiders, you know, a, someone who has credentials, if we, if we are capturing all the data, storing it in a uh, repository that could be edited, the person who created the, the bad event could go in and edit it. Well, that's not allowed in Guardium. Tenzel talked about the ability to, to meet compliance regulations, GDPR, your own versions of, of GDPR that's more specific for the Turkish community. Um, but we have prepackaged vulnerability um, accelerators to help you with that. And be able to, to, to detect or block unauthorized or suspicious activity. So this is a, a relatively new feature within Guardium for DB2. Um, but again, being able to not only, um, so p someone, for example, could be authorized to do a particular task, but now we can put additional checks in so that Guardium can then detect that and actually prevent it from happening. So for a little history, um, many of you, you've acquired Guardium many years ago. And it's been implemented both in production, non-production. You know, I've dealt with many of you over the years. But it was acquired to meet compliance regulations. Um, Turkey was um, in, the, in the leading edge of requirement to be able to monitor um, activity as it's happening within a database environment, uh, especially in the financial regions. And as, as Julie pointed out, um, since then, there's been many, many new regulations to meet that. But again, compliance regulations was what opened the door for many of our customers regarding uh, the implementation of Guardian. So what's changed, right? You've been using the tool for a long time. We've released several new versions of the STAP and the Guardian appliance. Tenzel spent a fair amount of time talking about where we're headed with our new newest offerings on the appliance side. Julie talked about the data sets STAP, right? That was introduced um, a few years ago, but again, it, it has evolved from the requirements asking for us to be able to detect sensitive data access that is within vSAM files. That's where it started. And then we enhanced the tool later when customers said, well, what about other file formats other than vSAM? So that's why we changed the name from STAP for vSAM to STAP for datasets to be more generic. With the STAP, we've taken a new approach where we're talk now delivering the, the maintenance on a continuous development cycle. So we, we used to come out with new versions similar to GB2, Right? We would come out with new versions on a regular scheduled basis. But since then, we've decided this, along with DB2 took the same approach, where now maintenance is going to be, maintenance and newer features 
will be made available to all our customers as it's being developed and tested and, uh, and uh, delivered. GDPR kind of changed the world for a lot of our customers. So now instead of just looking at very sensitive fields, meaning something like a credit card number or a nationality number, the definition now has radically expanded. As a result of that, we needed ways to do better classification. We need to find the sensitive data. Um, you know, if you think of it as a, a, an email address, right? No one considered an email address before to be a sensitive piece of information. Well, now it is. So how do we find that? So within Guardian, we've enhanced the classification um, abilities to be able to go out and actually detect that level of, of detail. And finally, customers want more than just to meet compliance. You know, Tanzel talked about um, active analytics, threat analytics, user behavior analytics. Well, in order to capture that type of activity, we need to capture more. We, don't, we can't be just uh, limited to monitoring those users that are considered privileged users, right? The, the database administrators or systems programmers. We have to broaden the scope. We have to tell the STAP that now we need to monitor on a much broader level. Um, we've been hearing this from a lot of our customers so that now a lot of policies have been changed to, to meet GDPR regulations as opposed to much more specific uh, regulations that required only um, privileged users or highly sensitive data access. Julie presented an architecture diagram and you can see this one is very different. Um, for the DB2 subsystem, we're not monitoring SMF records. Um, with DB2, we have the ability to actually install our STAP agent within the DB2 subsystem. So now we can actually see as SQL is coming into the DB2 environment, it gets inspected. And then uh, you can see on the left, a little further left hand side, we have a filter manager. This is where we determine what do we want to, to store. Uh, if we're looking at only privileged users, was this incom incoming SQL submitted from a privileged user? If it is, it's sent over to the Guardian collector on the left hand side. If it's not, it's ignored. So what we're talking about now is to be able to change that filter because we now may want to have needs where we need to filter more, filter less, right? I need to send more data to the Guardian collector so that I can do some of that analytics that Tenzel was talking about earlier. On the far left-hand side, we have a workstation at the top. This is the user interface to the Guardian collector. This is where our policies are built. This is how we interact with Guardian. This is where our reports are displayed. And at the very bottom, you can see we have a thread termination manager. This is what I was referring to where we could have a rule in place that says if this event happens and it's so uh, important that we want to block it from happening, you know, someone accessing a payroll table during the day, production payroll table during the day, a database administrator, they shouldn't be allowed to do that. With Guardian, we could set a rule that would prevent that from happening. So what are some of the specific enhancements that have been introduced? And hopefully you'll be taking advantage of most of these, but if not, feel free to contact us and we'll be more than happy to explain how this could be implemented in your environment. I mentioned about blocking, right? So again, payroll table access, we can block it. But we can also quarantine. And quarantine is a little bit different in that now we're going to prevent someone from accessing the system for a certain period of time. So someone tried to access a payroll table, we blocked it, but now we're going to prevent them from logging in for the next 15 minutes. And oh, by the way, we're also going to send an alert to maybe a SIM environment uh, to let, the, let, the, let it be known that this event happened. We may send an email to that person's manager. 
uh, and the manager may need to have to clear it before the person is granted access. Ability to monitor non-zero status codes. We're making an assumption that in a production environment, all SQLs should run successfully. If it's successful, it gets a zero return code. If it's not, it's suspicious. Why are we, why is this happening? Either maybe, maybe a database administrator just made a typo, a typographic error. Well, that's okay. We'll let, you know, we can understand that, but we need to see it. But it could be also that they're, they're looking, they're, they're doing suspicious activities. So non-zero return codes is one of the things that we uh, identify as a best practice that should be detected. We have options now to collect or not collect binds and rebinds, commits and rollbacks. Before these were always captured, many of our customers said, well, that's additional overhead that I don't really care about. So now we give you the option to either select it or not. Performance improvements. With virtually every release of the STAP, we're looking at how we can shorten our code path, make it tighter, uh, make it more efficient to reduce the number of MIPS that's being executed. Uh, Tanzel mentioned about the GDPR accelerator. Again, it's a quick start method to give you some basic reporting to help you meet the compliance requirements associated with this particular regulation. We've also, one of the things when Tanzel was talking about enhancements to the version 11 and 11.1 .1 system, we've also added uh, new user activity and access uh, reports within the base code itself now, so that um, out of the box, we provide now um, the ability to, to have a comprehensive set of reporting for the environments for DB2, IMS, as well as data sets. So where are we going? So this is kind of our roadmap where, where the, the offering manager has, has looked at what's available and what kind of requests customers are asking for. So these are the things that are on the active uh, roadmap going forward. We wanna support all the, the threat analytics that Tanzel has talked about earlier. So that means that now we can send, again, not only data for privileged users, but maybe others, so that now we can start getting um, an idea of exactly what normal behavior is within our environment and then use the capabilities within the Guardium uh, system to be able to detect those outliers. We've added many stability enhancements within the STAP as well as performance enhancements. One of the things, the two items in the red on the left-hand side, a new STAP release, the current version for the, uh, the, the data sets, uh, the DB, I'm sorry, the DB2 STAP is release 10.1.3. And Tenzel was talking about version 11 and 11.1. That's the version for the collector. 10.1.3 is the version for the mainframe, again, with continuous maintenance. What we're talking about doing is trying, and, and it's in red because it's not, um, there have been no delivery dates established for this yet, but we want to come out with a new release with the, the STAP. So basically roll up all the maintenance that has been associated since 10.1.3 has come, uh, become available. We'll roll that maintenance into a new release. And from that point on, you know, customers can install it and, and have a fully maintained system going forward at that point. Also looking at support for Edibase. Uh, we've had many customers um, in Europe, uh, Asia, United States that have been asking for this. So we're, we're taking an active approach to look at this to determine uh, what level of effort it will take for us to, to support Edibase. It may be an STAP, it may be other methods, but um, we're currently looking at that and considering it uh, for future enhancements. In the center part, we talk about this deployment on Z containers. Um, Tanzel talked about, you know, uh, insights. This is our new 
uh, offering going forward, where we're, we're now operating in a containerized environment. We want to make sure that Guardian for Z supports all of that. And again, we're, we've added reports to the version 11. We're going to be adding more reports as we get into the insights environment. On the far right hand side, we have some enhancements that, that um, Thomas will probably talk about regarding um, IMS, but we've added some um, capabilities within IMS already. Um, for example, like capturing the um, HALDB partition. We now have the ability to do that. We can send IP addresses, unit of work, bind variable attributes. So again, we're, we're listening to what our customers are saying, what additional features, capabilities, um, elements, bind variable attributes, for example, are uh, interested uh, that customers are not getting today that we can enhance the product uh, to support in the future. With that, that, that concludes my section of the presentation.